Hi friends! My students and I are having a really great discussion on accommodations that we can make in the art ed classroom and I wanted to let you in on that conversation. So first a little clarification between accommodations and modifications. That accommodations really help all learners learn the same information and modifications really change the curriculum. And as an art teacher, through your years of being an art teacher, you'll probably be asked to do both things. So the first would be accommodations, where you will have a couple students in a normal classroom where you will have accommodations for them where they may get extended time on a project, for instance. Modifications, you might have a group of learners that they put together in a class and they're going to change the curriculum and that's going to be called adaptive art. Either way, these are some tips and tricks that you can use to help all learners uh, with your classes. So the first thing is timers. So I use a lot of timers in my classroom. So here's just an example of a kitchen timer. I have many of them in my classroom. Um, and sometimes with students that are having a hard time with stamina, we use timers. Like I'll negotiate with them and I'll say, I'm going to need you to work diligently on this project for 10 minutes. And then when the timer goes off, you can, and you can insert whatever the student's reward is, X, Y, or Z. You can go to the water fountain. You can get up and wash your paintbrush. You can move around the classroom, etc. I actually use timers for myself as well. I have a lot of reading to do, so I set a timer and I say, in an hour after my reading, I'll be able to watch that cat video or return my friend's text messages, etc. So, timers are a great idea. The next thing I want to talk about is paper. So, Sometimes it's really uh, simple to just change the type of paper that our projects are done on. So this is our normal drawing paper for our classroom. Um, but some students, especially ones with some fine motor skill problems, um, this is a very small piece of paper for them and their arm does not work in that way. So why don't you just give them a bigger piece of paper? So this very large piece of paper, for instance, is great for students that maybe are getting their full arm and muscles into the project. So that is a great idea. Also think about different colored paper. So this is a normal piece of watercolor paper. It is very bright white, especially under these fluorescent lights. It has a tendency to really sort of glare back a very bright white. Um, if you change to just this buff paper, so I don't know if you can see it on the video, but there's just a slight difference between these two paper colors. And this is a buff paper. It does not have that glare. Or sometimes if you change from a glossy to a matte, it also is going to cut down on that glare and it's going to help with kids that are real sensitive to those issues. Another thing that we can do um, for learners that are learning to cut, so this could be anyone that have problems with fine, uh, large and fine motor skills, to our new students that are just beginning to use scissors. Um, sometimes the little kiddo scissors have very small spaces uh, for your fingers. This pair is actually designed for the student to put their fingers here and for you as the teacher to help them learn to cut. Um, but they make these two pairs of scissors which you can get at some specialty uh, school supply stores or you could probably even get them on Amazon. Oh, what's really great about them is you can hold them any spot on here and they're really easy to use. They're really easy to uh, press down to make that cut. Um, the student can actually hold them here and the teacher aid para or teacher can hold them back here and you could cut together. So those are really great tools. Also what I really like, um, these are adult scissors because they are sharp, um, but they have a special laser light on them. So I don't know if you can see, but as you cut, it actually projects this red light on here that helps you cut in a straight line. These are amazing scissors and I use them 
when I'm wrapping presents all the time. Here are some other things, especially for um, your students that have not fully developed fine motor skills, is that um, you want to give them something to grip. We have a lot of little tiny things in the art department. Little tiny paintbrushes, little tiny um, colored pencils, little tiny crayons. So I went to the dollar store. These are hair curlers old-fashioned hair curlers and they have this piece of plastic in the middle and you just throw that piece of plastic away um, and then I put the hair curler over this paintbrush so um, a student that wants a detailed paintbrush but they're having a hard time gripping uh, the small paintbrush uh, might have a little bit more control with this also these the same things that I've done I took an exacto knife which looks like this you can also use a screwdriver to just stab a hole in these tennis balls. These tennis balls I also got at the dollar store. And then I just slid them over a paintbrush so then a student can hang on to them like this. Um, also the small colored pencil or just a regular pencil like this they can hold and they can draw. This is also a really great tip for our older adults that have arthritis and maybe like gripping that tiny pencil is very difficult so here they have much more of a range of motion so think about that also I have these pencils um, these pencils have quiet fidgets on the end of them so sometimes you know if a student just has a little something that they can play with or move around in their hand, they are much more likely to focus on you, the teacher, and what you're talking about. That is the whole notion behind the fidget spinners. So here on the top of pencils, very quiet, different things to move around and to investigate and to play with. It helps keep some students focused in class. Um, I also have these pencil toppers. Pencil toppers are really great um, to put on the top of pencils to actually train and help people um, know where to put their fingers. So here it actually says um, R and L on it. I really enjoy this one here that has a space for your fingers to go. It helps train how to hold the pencil uh, it also, they're really uh, squishy and uh, have a much better texture to them that some of our students really like. Another idea that I got from the dollar store is these scrubbies. Um, you can very easily fill them with paint, um, especially for students with uh, not fully developed fine motor skills. They can easily paint a background. They can paint their name with this. Um, it also extends the hand, which is really excellent. And because they have the scrubby on the top of them, it provides a really nice texture. So I highly recommend these right here. Um, another thing that is small and hard to grasp in the classroom are broken crowns. Um, we have lots of little bits and bobs, especially at the end of the, of the school year, of little bits and bobs of crowns. You will also see your students maybe picking the uh, paper off of the crowns because some people are really sensitive to that texture and they don't like the feel of them. So uh, you can help them. You can take the paper off of the crowns uh, for them or what you can do is once you have a whole bunch of broken crowns like these right here, paper off of them, you take them and put them into a muffin tin. Just fill one of the slots of muffin tins. You need to put this muffin tin into the oven or toaster oven, either one, at 350 degrees for about five to 10 minutes. These crowns will melt, take it out, let it harden back up, and then a crown will actually pop out of there easier for some kids to grip and it still has these very vibrant colors and a great way to recycle the very end of your crayons. So uh, one thing that I love to do with students of all ability levels is to do some stamping. So I have found that the kids really love stamping. So here are just some ideas. 
Um, I took a toilet tube and I cut it in half and then I'm just going to put it into the paint and you can just stamp that on here. We're creating a really nice background effect. This would be a great thing for like some leaves or background. Um, what I like to do with this paper is sometimes cut it up and use it as a background for another project or to make a weaving out of it because it's just got this fun texture. This part of the toilet tube I just bent um, and kind of positioned into a heart shape. So you can see that heart shape. And then stamping it as well. So you're gonna get those little hearts on here. Let me turn this around so maybe you can see it. Those cute little hearts uh, galore through that. Um, I also uh, really enjoy two other techniques and that is using a plastic fork. So the plastic fork you just dip in the paint as well and then you just lay it on here and you're going to get some really great lines again a really great texture or with the cardboard um, you can cut pieces of cardboard and then the students can actually make straight lines which everybody likes a nice straight line and sometimes it's difficult for some people to get that straight line so with the cardboard it's much easier so you may want to try that a little bit. Again, great background techniques, projects on their own, or then you could cut up this paper for a different project. So I hope this was a few different tips and tricks to help you because it is your job as a teacher to make everyone who enters your classroom feel very comfortable, confident, and engaged no matter what their level or ability. Until next time, thanks for watching.